Hey everybody, welcome to episode 66 of the Tiny Disc Podcast, the unfortunately numbered last episode mm, mm. of the Tiny Disc show. I, I just realized, guys, we are literally executing Order 66 on our podcast. We oh, are. Fuck. We are. Uh, if we could get memes. to 69, we're at least executing Order 66. Uh, <laughs> I mean, ooh. I would love to have gotten to episode 69 just because, I mean, really just for the joke, but... You know, uh, it's a show that is about games and life, but today it's going to be about us because, damn it, we deserve our moment in our spotlight. I am Robert. So about life. Exactly. I am Robert, and I'm joined here by the morning Jack. Don't let the sun go down on me. And and the somber yet somewhat happy Colin Sparling. Hey, everyone. I have an excessive amount of liquid on my desk of the alcoholic variety. I've got a beer, too. I'm drinking a Lion Kugel Summer Shandy. Nice. I have some left over, even though it's damn in the near middle November. Of, yeah, it's the middle of the middle of fall. Tastes okay. good. Cheers. Hey, cheers. I'm drinking whiskey. Come by. So listen, guys, we're not going to mope around. We're not going to sit here and be said and Eeyores and shit. We're going to do our normal show. It just happens to be the last one with this title in the f- beginning of it. OK, so like, fuck. Like Cue the fuck. emo music. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, go Th- ahead. This is going to be, it's going to be a show where we're kind of just, it's one of those, like, series finales, like, where you talk to the the characters on the reality TV show, and they're like, what was your favorite moment? How did you feel about this? What are your thoughts on that? How did the show come to be? All that kind of stuff. And um, this, I, I, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. Jump in. Okay. I was just, was just going to say that. This just came to mind. Did you guys ever have a show like or a TV, you know, TV show, movie series, um, comic book, manga, whatever that came to an end and you were so sad to see it go? I I, definitely have a few. I am so proud of you, Jack. Yeah. You said manga. Oh, without me. Manga. Manga. What's the what's this anime? (laughs) Damn it. Should have just let it go. (laughs) I mean, I think I think everyone. I, I mean, everyone experiences that that whole thing of like oh hey this thing that i really like just ended what do i do with my life now yeah like what's what happens now like sopranos was big how do i feel friends was big yeah 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 so uh, what shows did you guys have that like you know when it ended you were just like fuck uh i mean dragon ball z when i was younger Mm. Uh, i thought it was still going it is (laughs) well suit yeah but like there was like a 20 year gap yeah almost between that to z ending and super so like um, there was that, but then Super kind of technically ended, even though they they left it open to possibly it's, making more. It, no, it's happening. I think they've said they're going to make more after the movie on January. Okay, it's going to be even yeah, so, more but, Dragon Ball. Yeah, with its horrid writing. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Usually, when I think of stuff ending though, and stuff that I've stuck with, I usually think of games, and one of those being like The Last of Us. That ending fucked me up. Did you cry? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I mean, I well, I fucking cried at the. Be- I still cried at the beginning of that game every single damn time. Oh, the beginning is the worst. Oh, dude, it's it's just oh. it gets me every single time. I start welling up, tears happen, my 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 eyes start raining. What what was the name of that um, documentary they did on the making of that? No shelter, no. I can't remember. It's not like that. I need. I've never actually watched that. I need to watch that. Oh, dude. Well, okay. Well, I'm, minor spoilers here. So th- it's really fascinating documentary. I won't talk about this very long, but they're they're doing that scene in um in mocap, right? And it's the actual actors wearing the suits, of course. And what's kind of weird about that is at the beginning and the end of any mocap capture, they have to stand up and do a T pose. You guys are aware of that yeah, process, yeah. right? Right. right T pose. Right. Okay. So he goes through and like, man, even watching on a shitty like home camera, watching his performance doing Troy that Baker, right? was yeah, Troy Baker's performance doing that was like heart wrenching. It was like, oh, it like elicited a response from you. Like you really felt like his daughter died. But he overacted that originally. Like, it was way overacted, way too melodramatic, way too crazy, and that's what they, it was going to be. 
and and that's what they were going to keep. And then you'll see in the documentary, like he actually calls him back in like weeks later, and he has to like relive that scene, which is still a painful scene to act out. And he's like, "Sorry to do this to you guys, but we have to do that again." And then the final result was what is ended up in the game. But what is funny is after like all this crazy tragic, my daughter just died. They all both have to stand up and do a T pose. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's got yeah. like tears streaming down his face and shit, just like it's so Yikes. weird, dude. Like that? that would like. I, I don't know if you guys have ever done, like, any sort of acting or anything. Yeah. But there I took, uh, like, an intro to acting class or whatever, uh, like, my freshman year of college. And it's one of those things where it's, like, it, you know, acting, whatever. It's just, you just get up there and, you you know, you pretend. You play pretend. Real quick. And, real quick. Grounded is the name of that documentary on YouTube. Yeah, Anyone you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it's like one of those things where like you don't really think about it, but then once you practice, like you start practicing a scene for a while, right? There's just like at least for me, there was an I had an experience where like the scene just clicks, and it was like the final time I had to perform it, right? And it was like for my exam or whatever, and the scene just clicks, and all of a sudden, like I felt like I was that character, and the scene ends with it's like a gigantic argument between a mom and his and her son, mm. and by the end of it, I was fucking screaming like at the oh. top of my lungs without even noticing mm. and like I, it ends with me like walking out of a door and like slamming it as hard as I can and like it was just a hey, dude you're you get into it so like I totally empathize with like the whole like just tears streaming down your face and you're really I mean I'm getting I'm kind of starting to sweat just thinking about it yes yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, uh, I think I, well I just think there's something to be said right about how there's already a lot of attention being paid to like TV actors, movie actors, like, oh, it's so cool. They act how they act. And like, you know, what's the behind the scenes stuff? And a lot of people talk about that in the mainstream, you know, people always know like, oh, hey, uh, that guy who plays uh, f uh, Bilbo in The Hobbit, he like flips off the camera a lot, like during the bloopers, like, you know, people talk about <laughs> that. But rarely do you hear about like video game actors. You know, it's just kind of like, oh, the end product is like these polygons interacting with each other with a voice. Cool. You know, like not many people think like, oh, some dude had to sit in a mocap suit and which is already daunting in and of itself. Right. Like wearing something like that and having to act out this scene where like your daughters died in your hands. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and the thing is, like, you know, a, a big point of a lot of movies are at least uh, one of my favorites, like. Blade Runner, right? They're, they made a made a point to use a lot of physical sets. Well, making a video game, you don't have that. Like, there's no such thing really as physical sets when you're mocapping for a video game. So, in that, in many ways, you have to be a way better actor because you have to put yourself in the just in the mindset and just imagine all of that's happening in front of you. Yeah. So, and like, I guess hats off to Troy Baker for even being able to do th that, and several other actors because they all do that, and it's it's tough. It's a hard thing to do. So, I mean, actors talk about how hard it is to act in front of a green screen all the time. Right. I mean, look at uh, Natalie Portman, like, you know, an Oscar award winner. And, she, you know, she had to do that for the prequels. And it was obviously a challenge. She can tell for everybody. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> That script so, was a challenge. Uh, yeah. And yeah, and, and Hayden Christensen, too. Like, he's a decent actor. Like, I don't fault him completely. But, man, he had real shit to work with there. Dude, he got so, the shit end of the stick. Yeah, anyway. totally. So what I wanted, the last thing I want to say on this before we move to the next topic is that I, I took a, a video production class at, at Ohio State and video arts was my minor. And I remember I had to make a music video or I had to make a video that was like five minutes long. I decided I want to make a music video. And I shot this whole video on my iPhone 6 or whatever it was, a 4, who even knows what it was back then. But I had my wife as the main subject in the music video and in the middle of shooting this we discovered together that holy shit she's a really badass actress and i'm not just saying that because she's my wife like i needed her to cry on cue for this particular scene for it to work well and she fucking pulled it off first try and it was fucking really sad to watch yikes that's impressive man. i know a lot of people can't do that a lot of people can't do that and yeah, so it's just a, it's a matter of mindsets, man. Yeah. And just to see that, like literally in, on the other side of the phone, I'm holding up to myself. I was like, well, it was kind of awe inspiring. But it was yeah. one of those cries where you actually kind of teared up a bit watching it. Dude, it was I mean, if I watch it back, definitely. But it's a kind of it's a kind of cry where like your face, you're trying to hold it together. But the tear just like falls out. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was good, totally. dude. 
oh, I guess they chill. Just think about it. But Good shit. to see, to be that close to like world class acting was, was something I'll, I'll never forget. It was years ago. I, I still remember it like it was yesterday. To this day. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so, so it wouldn't be tiny disc. It wouldn't just totally go off the rails. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> beginning of the show, right? This is how we do it, guys. I mean, this leave it, leave it to Jack to just be like, "I know we just started a show, but let's talk about what show made you sad when it ended, guys." Dude, it's a stream but, of consciousness show. That's the best thing I can do for it. I don't know what enough. else I can bring but to the table. You, you know what show made me sad when it ended? The tiny disc podcast show. Oh, oh, oh! I didn't even get oh. to say mine. No, 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 fresh... no, no, no! You yes. started moving on. We're moving on. No, 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 no! I'm saying two shows. It was. The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I literally cried at the last episode of that. <laughs> Uncle Phil and uh, Star Trek: Next Generation was incredibly incredible finale. You know, I've never sat there and like watched through a bunch of like Fresh Prince of Bel Air, but that clip that goes around the internet all the time—the one where he's like of his like his dad like yeah, 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 yeah. walking out on him, and he's just like, "Why don't he love me, man?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why didn't he love me? Why didn't he want me? And I'm like, God. Ugh, oh my god oh it hurts <laughs> the feels are real there yeah oh, the so feels. those are the two shows that i remember i was like really sad when they ended perfect thanks thanks for derailing my transition into why tiny disc is the yeah. saddest hey. show ending for me um yes. man so this show has been around for year and a half right yeah 18 months i think well, yeah roughly yeah. i mean man it went fast yeah first episode we published was like end of may early june 2017 and here yep. we are now on October 2018, November 2018, ending it. Um, I don't know. It started off, right? Like, I, I was on a podcast with both of you beforehand, but separately. As in, like, I had a podcast with Jack first, right? And then I found Colin later and did a different podcast with him. Hey, Robert, put you on the spot. Which show did you like better? <laughs> Which show did I like better? <laughs> Uh, oh, between like having both of you on. Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> I'm just kidding. You have to answer. I'm no, I mean, I think I like the ones with Colin more, but not because Jack was the worst. We all know that already. Um, it's that, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's that like by then we had had more of a solidified like voice as that show, you know, because I, because I mean, like Jack with yeah. you, that was my first podcast. So, like, no matter what, that was going to be like just not as good as what I'm going to do next, right? Okay. I mean, like, think about it. <laughs> what do you like more, the old show we did or this show, Tiny Disc? I, uh, I guess this show, because this show is without, you know, the restrictions of Ohio State. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I like this Yeah. Better. I mean, that, doing On Land was really cool. I, I remember, I, I'll never forget at the time, like, when I was I was doing the podcast, at least first starting out, I uh, I had four classes on that same day that I had to do that podcast. So I literally had to wake wake up at like six or seven in the morning, go to Japanese, go to whatever three other classes. I had the video games classes the other day, which is where I met Robert. Um, but then I'd had to get out of that class and then run upstairs, run upstairs. Yeah, run upstairs uh, for the podcast. And I got I was like, there was definitely if you go back and listen to those podcasts, there's some podcasts where this I'm like, this motherfucker is not even alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. like I just I'm dead. I'm totally like not even there. Yeah. And if, <laughs> if you want to dig through those old annals of history, you just look up on land podcast. O N L A N podcast. We, I wonder if they're still archived. They are. They're on um, oh, wow. the lantern. I actually don't know if the sound clouds are still up. So to, you know, check at your own risk. Yeah. But they should. The post should still be on the lantern dot com. If you really want to look through back there. And maybe my video game reviews are there. They might be. I know some of my video game reviews are still on there. Nice. Yeah, my uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands review is still there. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I ever heard your voice, Colin. Oh, yeah, with me and JL. That Yeah, it's not a great, great video. Yikes. First time I ever heard your voice. And I I will say that you're a lot cooler than I thought you would be based on the first time I heard your voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this guy's actually a huge asshole i like, thought you were gonna be i thought uh, to be totally honest with you like hearing your first, your voice first time i just thought you're gonna be real dude bro -y. like i thought you're gonna be into like madden and like oh god 2k well, and like call of duty he and then does fuck everything say else. dude a lot i i say do it a lot but that's just my small town midwest inflections yeah, i say dude. dude a lot because of the teenage mutant ninja turtles calabunga i'm my parents used to make fun of me and my friends with how much we said dude growing up. And then my parents me started too. to say dude a lot. 
<laughs> and then it just turned into an endless cycle. Yikes. Oh, shit. I got made fun of for saying dude too much, too. That's yeah. Fine. Yeah. But so I guess the first time that Jack and Colin had met was actually like when I reached out to both of them because I graduated from Ohio State and I was like, well, I don't want to stop doing a video game podcast. I still want to do that. I just can't do it officially through Ohio State. So let's start my own. And who am I going to reach out to? The two people that were the best on online. It's just, this is this whole tiny disc thing has been an on land all star, basically. Show. Yeah. Aww. Are, like, wait, are you are you implying that you you declared yourself an all star, yeah, right. Robert? Everybody's here except Waluigi. It's yeah, fucking stroking that ego, oh, Robert. Man, speaking yeah, of Waluigi, hey. I hope he gets announced on that Nintendo Direct on Thursday for Smash. Wah! Forty minutes of Smash, guys. It's coming. <laughs> wait, so they're gonna make him an assist trophy and a playable character? Is that a thing? I take it. Spoilers. I, yeah. I mean, we don't know he's a character yet. God, that'd be wild. That'd be great. Yeah. <clears throat> um, that That's that's worth the $60 alone. Yep, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was basically the start of it. It's just I reached out to these guys saying, hey, let's do a podcast. We're going to have to figure out Skype and everything. And then we moved over to Discord because Skype's garbage. No offense, Microsoft. And, um, you know, here we are 18 months well, later. Hold on. I was there when we first had the idea to go off and do our own thing. True. I mean, that's just because you were there at the end of On LAN. Well, yeah. And I was like, we should do our own thing because these restrictions are dumb. Yeah. And you guys were about to graduate. Well, I was. Colin still had another year of school. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. And so we decided to do our own thing because, I don't know. Well, also, it was like also being like an honorary member of like On LAN. I was almost thinking about continuing On LAN and, and Robert's absence. But then I was like, eh, doing all these classes and also eh. doing Tiny Desk would be... <laughs> Podcasts are hard. <laughs> a little too much. It is. It just is. It's not hard, but it's like a time sink for sure. It is. It is a time sink. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, so online kind of died after I left, but that's fine because it moved on and became something better with Tiny Disc here. Um, Definitely and, better. And when we all came together, you know, we, ha- we threw around a lot of ideas, but essentially we wanted it to just be a, like... Uh, video game talk show we threw around you know inspirations like giant bomb uh kind of funny co-optional you know all these like shows big, we listen to yeah. shows we enjoy yeah you know of course that's we're gonna emulate that right we're gonna try and do what they do um obviously we're coming into this problem now where it's like well so does like every other video game podcast right that's what every other one wants to do as well um yeah right I, exactly I, we're we're giant bomb light 2.0 whatever we're giant bomb light light we're like the aspartame Oh, we are the aspartame of giant bomb. Aspartame. <laughs> We're the artificial sweetener of podcasts. <laughs> We're the splendor. But, but, I mean, that's the thing about it that's so hard. Like, if you don't have, you know, if you don't already work at a major video game outlet, how are you going to break through the clutter, right? That's the primary challenge that we're going to face. And so, you know, we just want to do the podcast that we want to do and and hope that people come with us. And some of you have, and we're very grateful for that. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, just want to make sure that we're doing something that is unique and fun at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. And I mean, it, and that's not to say you won't continue to hear our voices on, on what's going on in games and gaming culture and blah, right. blah, blah. Um, I mean, you can still see our hot takes on social media. I know I'll be I'm actually in the middle of doing some research myself about transparency in the industry and stuff like that. So you'll hear I'm actually releasing that as an audio story. So you hear that later to give a little shameless plug. But um, yeah, like later on it did just don't don't hold your breath i'm sure there'll be something there later yeah yeah I mean, just because we don't have a show about video games doesn't mean we still won't have thoughts about video games it like, certainly will yeah i mean i'm still going to be around on like tech raptor game luster and i'm on twitter and i don't know it's i'm, I'm i know i'm going to be around giving video game stuff for sure um, um do you guys want to kind of talk about you know the origin of of the brand and how that came about the logo you mean i mean even the name too like we were i was we were just Guys, it's so hard to name shit. I don't know if you ever try to name shit, but it's hard, and you got to think, put some thought into it. And so, <clears throat> Tiny Disc just sounded like a good brand, essentially. I mean, what are some other ideas? Do we have that data? Like, what the show oh, was going to be called? It was almost Games Over Rice for a minute. Games Over oh, Rice yeah. was one of them, yeah. Games Over Rice. Was, Whose idea was that? That was, that was my idea. Yeah. I, I like that. I like that one. What are some other, if we can remember some old titles? I don't even remember now. Games Over Rice is good. Yeah. That, I mean, that document's old and lost to the dead oh, of time. Podcast Ichiban. I think I brought oh, that one up. Yeah. And I think I threw out Gotcha Pod. Gotcha Pod. Yeah. 
Yep, yep. And I'm sure we oh, came up man. with many more and found out they were stolen already. Yeah. Or and, taken. And the thing about, yeah, that, I mean, certainly. Uh, and then Tiny Disc just kind of worked because it was a brand a dick that, joke. You could, that you could brand things off. And it was a dick joke, too. Like, But it also <laughs> like reminds me of GameCube. Right, the small yeah, discs. We from talk GameCube. extensively about. I mean, I'm sure you guys are sick of us <laughs> mentioning. Even we the are the word GameCube, GameCube podcast. Yeah, there can't possibly be other people talking about Nintendo stuff on the internet. No. I just don't believe it. No, no, no. It's just impossible. Um, so, 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 so I, we I do. Up. I do want to get ahead of this. Um, I at least was not aware of the NPR Tiny Desk concerts, and I Me realized neither, yeah. that came that comes up very frequently when you search Tiny Desk. Yeah, so, I wasn't aware of that either. But people were asking me like, "Oh, you, like you mean like Tiny Desk?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And then I look, I'm like, "Oh, yeah." I was like, "Oh, whoops." <laughs> oh well, hey, you know. Um, well, did we if- find one that was like? Uh, like a DS podcast or some shit. It was uh something you know. Tiny cartridge. Yeah. Tiny, tiny cartridge. Tiny cartridge. Something like yeah. that. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good podcast and a good theme too. All handheld stuff. That's that's good shit. Yeah. Yeah. So, for sure. So you know, we wanted a brand that could like you know branch off and do other things too. And you know, we're thinking kind of about the future of it as well too. And again, the brand isn't necessarily necessarily you know retired and dead in the water like it's something we could revisit maybe we'll do something completely new in the future but we still own this shit can't if, copyright if we come back can we name it medium disc medium disc <laughs> medium com. disc grande disc so do you guys know the story about um guns and roses right like when uh, axel rose was a huge douche and they wanted to still do stuff but they needed a new lead singer so they got scott wyland remember can that I, and they made what was oh, the name of that band? revolver can i just ask only did you say asshole road or Axel Rose? Axel Rose. Okay, because I heard asshole. I never heard asshole Rose. I heard okay. asshole Rose, and I'm like, well, Axel. that's fitting. I mean, same thing. It's fitting. I've, I've got these big, uh, you know, Pacific Islander lips, man. I'm sorry. So, anyways, um, Axel Rose, you know, it was minus, or I'm sorry, Guns N' Roses minus Axel Rose was Velvet Revolver. It was like the the thing. But then only after they like name the band and all the shirts and all the merch and the tour is booked and everything's done and they sign their deal and everything, do, does someone say, fucking forehead slap, Velvet these two bands have guns in the name, both of them do. Oh, <laughs> like, oh my God. And they're like, what the fuck? Rip. <laughs> <laughs> Way after like the fact, no one thought of that. And that's kind of how I felt too when we like, you know, the months down the road, I was like, oh shit, we're Tiny Disc. And like one of my favorite shows and biggest influence is Giant Bomb. And it just is like, you know, size first, adjective, yeah. noun. I was yeah. like, fuck. I mean, I guess that's kind of a, a leap, but it is something that bothered me. I was like, oh, man, I hope people weren't just like thinking like I copied that. Like it was totally a weird coincidence. Right. You know? So. Um, and then with our logo, we threw around a lot of logo ideas. I'm oh, us- gosh, I was usually the this. one that was spearheading them since I've got, like, I think the most is a graphic design experience of the three of us. So why don't you throw your resume on the table? Shit. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I spent three <laughs> years at. <laughs> so, so no, but yeah, the, the logo went through many, many, many iterations. It did. Like describe some of them. We- yeah. I, I, I remember, uh, at one point it actually did have a disc in it. Yeah, like a tiny disc, mm, quite literally. Right, and, um, and we were like, "Well, that looks like tiny O disc." Right. Yeah, I can't remember which one of you guys came up with the tuning force thing. Was it Jack? I think it was Jack. I came up with the yeah, I came up with the idea for tuning force, but I didn't know what to do with them. Oh a, yeah, because we're trying not to ride on uh, Yamaha's coattails. Well, yeah. I didn't know the Yamaha had tuning forks until after we already had the finalized logo too. We right, had like, one that looked uh, very, let's just say, copyright infringemently close to Yamaha's logo. It was borderline because it was like kind of like a pyramid of tuning forks. A triangle. In the center. A triangle of tuning forks, if that makes sense. And so we just wondered like what to do with it. And then somewhere around the, you know, I saw it and I just, and I knew I wanted them to be some weird colors. We didn't settle on the galaxies yet, but just every configuration I saw just wasn't necessarily doing it for me. And I would show it to people and just kind of like test market it, right? Like, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? Not saying if it's what it is or anything like that, just to get their honest opinion. And it just wasn't doing for me. I just didn't see enough color like over the background. So I thought the best way to get as much coverage is to lay them like flat on top of each other. And then if you invert the middle one, right, it kind of looks like from far away, kind of looks like a cool microchip. Yeah. So that was kind of thought yeah. of that. And then, and then having the three tuning and forks and the universe dra- backdrop behind it was kind of like, you know, three people. I know this sounds corny, kumbaya, whatever, but it's just it's a good uh, 
boilerplate. It was like three people in tune with like the gaming universe. Oh. Yeah, I mean, we don't tell you this, but after we're done recording every night, we sit around in a virtual drum circle and sing Kumbaya is kind of like a send circle jerk and well um, we don't circle jerk that's that's not wholesome but <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you over the sound of my foil hat <laughs> <laughs> but no but that so that's kind of the you know the storyline behind the logo there for anyone that cares yeah uh still copyright you know trademark 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 us yeah uh 2018 uh yeah. a dab D- yeah. dab Just a dab on him yeah um, um yeah Colin I just, uh, but I, I think that there's something to be said about, I, I, I think podcasting in kind of general, because I think that a lot of people take getting behind the mic, the mic for granted. Like a lot of people at first glance would say it's easy. You know, I, I, I feel like a lot of people are like, Oh, you know, they're just sitting behind a mic and, and bullshitting that, that that's not hard bullshit. It's not like, I, I, I almost guarantee that you pull any random guy off the street. And they're going to sh- they're going to struggle and stutter and, you know, fumble over their words. You put them behind the microphone and struggle to make a point. I mean, th- it, it takes time to to get used to speaking behind the mic and 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 just being able to enunciate and being able to get your point across in a concise manner. Yeah. Like, look because at Colin right now. <laughs> I, I know like I'm I'm kind of a like and I wouldn't say a success story because I'm still working on it. I'm definitely not a success story. <laughs> uh, just follow me, guys. <laughs> no, I, but like you can actually like if you listen back to like those original recording recordings of on land to now, I yeah. almost guarantee you're going to notice a huge difference in the way that I talk on the mic. Um, and it's, it's something that's been like a huge point for me to like, make sure I get better at talking on the mic. Um, and, and, and so I don't know, it's, it's just one of those things where like, you, you don't really think about it. And another thing too, is I, uh, sound quality, sound quality has always been a huge thing for us too. A lot of people take that for granted, but I've always proud of, like been pretty proud about how the show has sounded as well. Even though we, we all have pretty basic setups, but it's always sounded pretty damn good for the most part. You know, yeah. I've never listened to an episode and, and been like, shit, I have to turn this off. Except for the road trip. Sounds- oh, I mean, not that the road trip episode was bad. But, no, but it wasn't bad. That was definitely our worst sound quality. I mean, well, we, we bought lanyards off Amazon, had them delivered. Lavalier and had them all mics. Lanyards. In- and Lav what mics? I say? Lavs, lanyards, whatever. And lanyards. I had them plug, had <laughs> I'm going to speak into my keys. <laughs> had them plugged into our own phones. Like, it was kind of like a real grassroots effort there to get that. Oh, yeah. Recording it totally going. was. So it was I'm part of the award, whatever it sounded like, honestly. Yeah. I think the worst sounding episode is when that, that episode where uh, my internet crashed and I had to go to Robert's place and <laughs> record. Oh, with that was bad. <laughs> yeah, in that's the one same of my room. favorites. That was one of my yep. favorite episodes. Yeah, like I'm sitting there looking at your ass while I can see Robert on the camera. Yeah, because yeah my head, ass crack is hanging out of my pants because I had my back turned in. Your head was like <laughs> in Robert's his hamper or some shit. I can't yeah. remember. <laughs> what the fuck so backstory here um we had to scramble it was like day of the show and i think your power went out was that what happened no my Colin? internet went out your internet um, went out so he had to scramble go to robert's house which wasn't too far away and do the show from his bedroom and so yeah. i guess behind the scenes here a lot of people might not know this but i mean we're not joking when we say i'm in austin and they were in columbus at the time and now they're in seattle like we literally are doing this show uh, you know, across the country, across two different time zones, sometimes three time zones. And we, you know, make every effort to make it sound like we're in the same room, even though we're, you know, literally two hours apart. Well, a lot more than that. <laughs> time zone wise, we're two hours apart, but like T- two distance. time zones apart. I meant, yeah, yeah, yeah. Distance, we're fucking well, far. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you're yeah, on the fucking but, West Coast, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no. But yeah, no, that basically it turned into a clusterfuck of of uh, all of us like me and Robert blending into each other's mics and it turned into like a whole mess post post pro wise oh, and I'm, and there was a lot of modulation on the voices. And yeah, it, just it wasn't it good. wasn't great. I, I'm not. Proud I of forgot that about one. that show. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about the show. That was fun. Now that we reminisce on that. I remember I'll never forget Robert's pink Snuggie, which he still brought with him today. It's his blankie. It, it's he brought it's it across. Sitting, it's right <laughs> behind me right now. Yeah, it's his, it's his Zuzu. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did want to talk a little bit about that road trip episode because, like, I remember at first we were like, oh, man, this is such a good idea. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm so happy it we thought It was a good idea. It. it was, but then it got to a point, like, halfway through the road trip, we were just all like. We're just tired because we're yeah, in the like, car. We're not putting this, like, 
40 minutes in the show are we <laughs> like we're recording but it's like no, we're not yeah. putting this in the show and, no. and i remember just the road noise being brutal in the back of your car colin oh yeah oh yeah it, to- it totally was i i mean it it's not nearly as bad in the actual show itself when you listen to it. I don't know. I don't know if did you just do some post pro magic in there, Robert? Or no, no, no. It was just kind of that's how it was. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it was a fun show to do though. Um, you, it's it's funny because it's it's super like you can totally tell we're in the car. I'm literally asking for Jack for di- like directions, <laughs> directions yeah. as like as I'm you know in the driver's seat going down the road from Col- or up from Columbus. And one of my favorite parts is when we got into the rural parts of Ohio and, and Robert's like, is that a fucking Confederate flag? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, that I was, was like, so yeah, scary. Yeah, this, this is that where so I call scary. home. You're welcome. It was so scary for me to see the Confederate flag, man. Yeah. Because I'm scared it, of rural Ohio anyway, because I've had bad experiences there. So I was like, oh, protect me, white person. Well, I mean, there's some sketchy people, dude. I, I don't oh, put yes. it past you. Oh, yes. So, so what am I? Oh, oh good. I was just gonna lay the question out. Does anyone have a, a particular show where they felt like this was a good one? Let's yeah, talk about exactly. It. So I was going there too. So one of my favorite ones, still to this day, I think it was around last May or maybe this May. No, last May, definitely last May, twenty seventeen. So or, like the beginning June, of the show, Juneish, July. So it was near the beginning. It's definitely in the. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of the episodes. We didn't really prepare that in depth for for this, but. Uh, where we're talking about the fidget spinner game on Steam. Oh yeah, yeah and you're that. reading the and you're reading the uh, the description for the fidget spinner game. <laughs> you like press like space or whatever to spin the fidget spinners. Yeah. Do you remember that? Do you guys yeah, remember that? I, oh, yeah, I remember gosh. that. I've listened to that a couple times. It's always funny to me. Yeah, was, dude. And, and I just could. The, I was in disbelief. That it even existed. It was incredible. It was an incredible explanation of a game, and it was just really funny. Made me laugh, and it's just I don't know. There was like there was a point there that was right around the point where I felt like we were starting to hit a stride, and you just know, like once you like once we call cut on a show and and we feel good about it, like I just get that feeling, like yeah, that was a good show. Mm. You know, Uh, you just kind of know it right then. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, one of my favorite moments was when we were talking about it was the news section. We were talking about Nintendo Labo, and. Jack, you were doing that, and I was like, "Now breaking news, we're down, we're throwing it down to Jack on the field live at Nintendo oh, yeah. Factory, Nintendo Cardboard Factory," and it was just like that to me was like a great moment of just like solidified, like I tossed the ball and you knocked it out of the park, you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. No, it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Because I big definitely part- think. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say, yeah. I mean, I, I and I think what you're gonna say, Jack, is like you can just kind of watch as as our our chemistry improved and kind of molded into this thing where it just became natural and that's kind of what we were aiming for but yeah i mean what were we gonna say jack we're still working obviously on not talking to each other <laughs> yeah yeah totally <laughs> that's that's always that's always yeah that's, we're never gonna yeah, be that's a podcast always, that's good at that i don't think <laughs> no i don't think so either i think i mean we're i mean all three of us are people with things to say so i but, think that's just what it comes down to but we're also in three different rooms right like we're it's yeah, just totally. like different right we're doing this completely remotely so i think that has something to do with it um no i, I I can't remember exactly what I was going to say. It's just, it's, oh, about about basically just getting, we're all getting better, you know, and we're all growing when it comes to improv because a big part of the show, a big component of the show is comedy, I think. And I want to do a show that makes me laugh. And I feel like if I'm making you guys laugh, then I'm doing a good job. Maybe someone else listening to this is laughing to this too. So, yeah. So, you know, I think we uh, emphasized there for a while, you know, ma- yeah. making sure we did some kind of, you know, improv jokes just to warm up or exercises, et cetera. And, you know, probably keep doing that, continue to do that going forward. You know, another great moment, and this was kind of earlier in the show, but to me, it's like one of my, the earliest memories for me where I'm like, man, this, like, we have a good chance of being pretty, pretty good and pretty entertaining was when Colin was like, what the fuck is a D1? And then what's a D2? (laughs) Like, it's a fucking coin, Colin. (laughs) Yeah, I think there's, uh, there's something to be said about uh, the amount of colonisms I had throughout the (laughs) aspartame. He yeah, was guys for the record, none of those were works, none of those were put on, none of that was prepared or rehearsed at all. It is like Terrace House is completely unscripted. No Those are all. really things Colin thinks. Those yeah, really aren't real. You know, can <laughs> yeah. we can we go down the line? Can we make a, a master list real quick of all the colonisms you remember? <laughs> Called a montage. And I mean, in he, other words, your boy is dumb. So <laughs> let's, uh, let all right, you let's throw the ball back and forth, Robert. So I've got what is a D2? I've got Aspartame, it's a natural sweetener. 
or it's, a, it's a sweetener substitute. You mean aspartame? <laughs> um, aspartame. <laughs> Welcome to the roast of Colin, everybody. Yeah, I, I, but like beyond that, I can't think of any like hand picked. I know there were a bunch more though. There were tons. There were tons. He's. I mean, he's just like used words like completely incorrectly. Like, uh, oh man, what was it? The only one I can think of is asp- aspartame. <laughs> There were like at least fifteen or twenty over the last year and a half. I don't know that much, I'll, but you guys were still pulling when I said Paul, though. Like Paul, when I was talking about that's voting. one. Yeah, what is it? Paul. When what? I was when I said Paul, like it, like voting polls. Paul. Yeah. Paul. It's Paul, yeah, not Paul. And we were all like, "Are you uh, saying Paul like the name Paul?" Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot, guys. I mean, there's too many to count. To be honest with you, I mean, there's some where he would say something. I can't remember. Dang it. I feel like something he misused the word intimate or something like that or intimacy. I can't remember. Yeah. There's too many. I don't know. Uh, I said something stupid like that. I said, uh, uh, shit. What was the word I I used? I don't remember. So it was during our E3 showcase this year. Yeah. Yeah. It's just funny. Just, they're just little nuggets of joy, guys. Just listen to it and watch this grown ass man learn a new word in real time. <laughs> Going for my masters this year's guys, I promise. Hey, he's by the way, he's <laughs> technically the most educated man on the show. Literally. <laughs> he is. Yep. Literally in grad school as we speak. Yep. They actually took him, guys. They did there it. There you go. We yep. only only Start six on the way here. All right. So let me let me flip the script here. Jack, you have on our notes here that you want to talk about our worst shows. You want to dunk on us. I don't even know. Like, it's not like I have one. Like, I'm taking you guys to task. I got a bone to pick. It ain't nothing like that. I mean, worst it's, show. It's been seven months, and I need to air out all my dirty laundry. I can talk about. I know. I've been waiting for this day. I sunk this show just so I could talk about this. No. Uh, I can talk about my worst show easily. And so a little bit of behind the scenes stuff here as well, too, where uh, we did the 10 days of tiny disc. And do you guys remember the subject? What day that was? Was it best Xbox 360 game? No, I remember this very clear. I think I remember what what you're talking about. So we were talking about game with the best artistic style. Okay, okay, okay. And so I need to preface this, but I was obviously listening intently to Giant Bomb's holiday fair which is like fucking something ridiculous like 120 hours of content over like a period of five or six days there aren't even you know like that many hours in that time for anyways you get the point they come out with a ton of shit during the holidays and i was listening to them talk about how terrible quote unquote cuphead is because of like the influences that it draws its art style from and you know in the in the racist and sexist kind of background behind that and so they didn't want to actually it wasn't giant bomb now that i think about this it was more waypoint if i'm being completely clear on that it was more waypoints um takedown of this of this game and i was enjoying cuphead i liked it for just like everyone else like the layman i just liked it for what it was but they were talking about that and it really uh, i i pulled a cardinal sin here and i really let it kind of color my opinion of that rather than just looking at everything over face value and so you know, they brought up the point that like, we shouldn't reward shows that, you know, have come from this checkered past. And I was like, you know what? Maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. So what happens? Oh, you're <laughs> Just, throwing you the question to yeah, us? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to describe what kind of happened? So, Robert? I mean, so we again, were talking, yeah. talking about my worst show. Here. We were talking about like what we, because this was 10 days of Tiny Disc, which we're going to get to later, but it was essentially our award show, uh, end of the year stuff. And, uh, we were talking about what game do we think looked the most artistic, and we narrowed it down to four nominees. We had Cuphead, Little Nightmares, two others I'm not remembering, so I guess they weren't worth mentioning anyway, right? Um, and it, it was pretty much down to, like, all three of us were thinking, yeah, Cuphead. I mean, it's got to be Cuphead. I mean, everyone still remembers that. And then Jack brings up, yeah, but there's this article... <laughs> So did I say it like that? I think I, I don't know if I did say no, it like I mean, that. But I'm, anyways, anyways, I, I, the bottom line here is that I threw something completely out of left field that we didn't discuss at all. They had no idea it was coming into it. And essentially, I was inadvertently putting them in a really weird, awkward position to be in in a podcast that's being recorded like on the fly. And and, and I don't I don't want to paint this as like because he threw something at us that we weren't expecting. We were just like, oh, shit, what's going on? Like we can handle that right like i mean it's it's a podcast and not everything goes yeah and i mean we yeah and before we we hit the stop button we tried to handle it as best we could but yeah we had to we had to end up cutting it right but i I just don't don't want it to come off as like this show is very scripted like we have we have our lines written out every week and then jack threw us something that 
was unwritten and we were like oh shit now what yes it that was, is correct robert yes th- thank you for making yes. me feel like i am making too much of a point um, you are welcome can we talk like that for the rest of the show no let's not good um but yeah he was kind of like throwing colin and i in this corner of like well you can award it to cuphead but you're kind of racist if you do <laughs> and it's like and, and, and so it was over and like we hit stop and i understand why you guys take it that way it wasn't really meant to be that way but then we're both we all just look around like oh that was really bad and we just basically had to recut the show and the show that you're hearing now on the feed is what we ended up with that was the second take of it yeah right like it was oh man it it was the only time though i can think of where we were just like that sucked we need to redo that from the beginning yeah that was my worst show easily and that was a lesson learned for me on my part and man it was like Ooh, I don't know, guys. I work too full time, right? I, don't, I <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, listen. I, I, I've like, I've definitely been guilty of letting an outside source like color my own opinion, and sometimes that happens. Um, so, like, like for example, I, I recently played through like Life is Strange two. Uh, you know, I, I, Robert, I was telling you about this, mm. but like, I was, I listened to a podcast. But I made the mistake of listening to a podcast, and they, they gave their opinion about it, which is fine. Like I'm all fine with that, but it, it, it was to the point where it like, and, uh, I was like looking for a particular at like perspective in, if that makes sense in the game, I'm trying not to spoil anything, but basically they said they like the way that life is strange Two is like, they, they it's almost a cartoonish portrayal of certain political views and stuff mm, like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and so like I was actively looking for that when I was playing through life is strange and it kind of ruined, it kind of like tinged my opinion a little bit but like looking back on it now i'm like that's not really fair i should have like went, went a little bit more open-minded and, yeah. and just made my own just made my own deductions from it yeah and you know i mean like we're all guilty of that like that's just a human experience right like we all like yeah. to think we can come up with our own opinions and so for the most part we can but like once another person's opinion enters your mind it's over you've it's, it's biased already instantly it's there Right, you you don't you don't do the you don't want to do the whole Philip Mewson thing where you're trying to review a fucking game and you actually research other people's fucking impressions about the game before yeah. you write your review. No, <laughs> never read reviews before you write a fucking review. Anyone that's trying to get into games journalism, lesson number one: never read anyone else's review. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, you know, and also I, like you know, it's it's really hard to be unbiased though. It yeah, is it, fucking difficult oh, well, yeah. in today's world now. Totally. And, and Look, all these me, news outlets, people that say they're unbiased. Like good fucking luck. I just call bullshit on that. Look, let me let me drop a little bit of knowledge that I learned from going to four years of journalism school. They nail into your head. Don't be biased. Bias is bad. And the only thing I learned is everyone has bias. Fuck off with this no bias shit. Like, Did they tell you how to not be unbiased rather than just saying don't do it? They just said don't do it. And I'm like, I get that. <laughs> and, and and like it makes sense, right? Like if there's like a, a political issue, you shouldn't be writing like I support gun rights because of this, but they're debating gun rights, right? Like you should just be saying, hey, they debated gun rights. But um, it's just like I actually really support the way the late and great John Total Biscuit Bain does things where he wore his biases on his sleeve. So that way when he tells you like, if you ask him, hey, what were your thoughts on, like, on Owlboy? He'd be like, I didn't like that game. But because I don't like platformers, not because it's a bad game. Uh-huh. And by wearing your biases right. on, those, on your sleeve like that, I think it's, like, almost a lot more fair, right? Because it's like, I understand the information you're putting out there, but I'm also understanding the lens that you're putting it out there through. And that, I think that's what matters, acknowledging that you're putting something, like... I feel like it's perfectly okay to put any sort of opinion out there as long as you're not trying to state it as fact, right? Mm -hmm. Like, as long as you're admitting that it's through your own lens. And it's also, like, it's also perfectly okay to admit when you're wrong. (laughs) No, no. I'm I'm right. Like when when Robert bought that MAGA hat he's wearing right now? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Fucking I bought this red hat that says Nuka-Cola on it, and I'm like, yeah, Fallout. And now it's like, well, it's a red hat with white text on it, and from afar it looks like MAGA, and I'm like, It absolutely does, too. Now that you said that, too, I can't can't unsee it now. Yeah, I know. I I need to do something to it. I need to reclaim the Nuka-Cola Fallout hat that it is. Mm. Um, But something I did want to throw at you guys, since we're talking about Worst Show, and like we're talking about how we cut content, I think it'd be interesting, there are people who might be asking, like, how much content did we cut? from our shows 
I mean, we. I mean, there's a lot of shows. The best case where it was just one and done. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Bam, bam. Thank you. You know, exactly. The majority of the shows are like that. Yeah. But yeah. you know, the, oftentimes we'll start and shoot the shit in the beginning, and sometimes we did like a, what do you call it, a running intro or a jogging yeah. intro, like a running intro like where it just kind of rolls in. Um, yeah, 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 a rolling intro, yeah. yeah or, uh, you know, other times we would just come in straight up, hey, this is the show, da, da, da. Yeah, and sometimes we'd take some of that that stuff we talk about before, like, official action, and throw it in at the end. It's like a bonus. Right, yeah, If for in case people are still listening. And so, th- before we get too far, I did want to touch on something you did say. We were talking about Total Biscuit. And that is one thing I like about our show, and that's something that having your own show and you can do pretty much whatever fuck you want to do. Something I do really appreciate about what we did, guys, was that we were had the freedom and and the will frankly to give honor to people that had passed like chester bennington is one of the things that um stands out to me i like that i like that tribute to him whatever i understand lincoln park is like part a lot of people make fun of him like i get that for sure but like as a 90s kid like when hybrid theory came out that shit was like the coolest thing since metallica's black album to me honestly and it still is a classic i don't think anyone could really disagree with that but uh you know we were able to do that and it was special and it was timely and we were able to do that as well for Total Biscuit too. Uh, yeah, I think there might have been one or two more, maybe. I those believe are the two so. That stick yeah. out to me. Yeah, those are two that stick out to me. Oh, but we, we um, did one for the singer for the zombies. Oh the, yeah, the unfortunately, the like a yeah. lot of people died over the last two years, man. So we had, you know, yeah. we had some um, in more in memoriams to do. Yeah, um, but totally. As as the person who who edits uh, every episode. I, there really isn't that much we cut like if we cut it it's because like trust me you didn't want to hear it like it's just garbage it's like us saying time out like my mic got unplugged or time out i need to do this you know that kind of stuff like right it, i mean we did we did definitely have technical issues at some point there was one show just not that long ago where someone's computer died like three times while we're trying to record it and if we lose some things that we recorded then so be it that's part of the game Right, but but we never exactly. ever like, I don't know, like we don't record like thirty minutes of just like you know raunchy, unrelated fucking crazy batshit stuff, and then we're just like maybe let's cut that out and then not publish. You know, we're pretty we're pretty like on the like on our sleeves about we're on we're live. Let's say what we want to say and cut. Yeah, right. And and you as you go further back in in the episodes and stuff like that, you'll notice in earlier episodes we actually did have to start out cutting stuff while we were just kind of getting used to the chemistry that we had, getting better behind the mic and blah blah blah. Because sometimes stumbles would happen or something would happen where it would like or we'd go off on a tangent or the conversation would just get really dry. So we just felt like we needed to cut it. That happened a little bit down the line where we were like, I don't know if that's really relevant. We'd cut it. But yeah. it's usually stuff that was never really that never really added much value to the show anyway. So, mm-hmm. um, one thing I do want to talk about because this is probably the biggest project we as a group undertook was the ten days of Tiny Disc, which we alluded to earlier. Our whole end of the year award show, um, and what we did, I guess, if you didn't tune in, was we recorded a lot. Oh <laughs> like, yeah, so much. A ton. Um, but what we wanted to do was have like a 30 minute episode, one every day leading up to Christmas or no, was it leading up to the new year? New Year's day. It was cr- new-, new Year's day. I yeah, think it was New Year's right. day. Yep. You're right. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. New Year's. So it was like yep. the 20th to, or the 21st, something like that to the 31st, something like that. Yeah. It was the 10 so days. Look, of, I don't know. Yeah. 10 <laughs> yeah. days of tiny disc. Um, and it was, the thought was that it's something to listen to while everyone's on break. People are commuting. People are traveling cross country driving etc anyone that likes the show just more content for them i was off of work getting paid for like a week or two weeks something like that and so i had extra time they were out of school so it just made sense but man was it more work than i anticipated <laughs> i think we oh, would yeah, do, it was... i think we would do something like that if we were to do it again this year we would approach it slightly differently yeah it was like it was a little bit grueling some of it um but you know what i mean i I look back on it fondly. Like, yeah, yep. I, it was a good memory. Like, I, I, Christmas break is some of my favorite times. Like, yeah. has some of my favorite memories. That, like, Christmas, Christmas break for me is always a time when I have a ton of free time on my hands, and like, I just spend time playing games or whatever. That's usually prime game time for me. Um, and I'm just doing nothing but sitting on my ass, and it's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I get to open presents at some point, but you know, with the family. Right. Um, and so having that added aspect of like, oh, hey, that podcast thing, I get to sit there and just basically concentrate on that 
for like an entire week was actually really cool. It almost kind of like for a short span there, it almost felt like doing podcasts as a job and not in a negative sense, like as, but it was as if I was kind of doing it as a living in some ways. Um, and I thought that was awesome. Uh, you know, aside from working at, I think I was still working at Dave and Buster's at the time. Rip. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, other than that, um, but yeah, it's going to be a little bit different this year, you know, a little away from home and all that. It's going to be going to be a change of setting, change of time, but right. It's a good time. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm looking forward to not having snow on Christmas. Again. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I had a lot of fun with 10 days of Titus too. Like I had, you were the most. Yeah, I really enjoyed yeah, yeah. editing all that stuff, though. I thought that was a lot of fun. And I, one of my favorite things, honestly, was us coming up with that list of, like, what songs are we going to play at the end of these episodes? And some of them oh, were, yeah. like, classic Perry Como and all that. And then others were, like, fucking Jack was like, did you know Run DMC did a Christmas song? And we were like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember <laughs> <No>. that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that was, no, that was super fun. Yeah, I thought that we had a lot of fun with the music selections there. And thank goodness we didn't get cocky, copy what? Copy white strike. Copy white strike. Copy white strike. No, thank goodness that didn't happen. But I, yeah, I look back on it super fondly. It took a ton of work. I remember working on my own personal top ten list. It took me like eight hours of writing. You know, um, yeah, literally. So it was it was a good time, and I'm glad we have that. I I'm glad we have that to go back and listen to. And who knows what we're gonna do? You know, I don't know what the future's gonna hold. But I mean, who knows? Twenty if we days might of tiny that. disc. Yeah, twenty fucking rock solid days of discing in the small <laughs> 25 days of fucking christmas there you go we're just every <laughs> year let's expand it a bit till like it's 12 yeah. months of tiny disc yeah. just treat it like wrestlemania the super bowl like just make it a fucking roman numeral every time yeah <laughs> tiny rock disc around the christmas tree. it was good man i like the personal top 10 list i love that robert used the persona music because i love that music um no it was it was a good time it absolutely was it was it was grueling and it was like you know day after day some podcasts or some days we we're doing like what like three podcasts in a row yep like on some days like holy crap that's a lot of talking i definitely remember being hoarse at the end of some of those days well, it was fun oh yeah totally like i was i i think i woke up one day and i was like kind of my voice was going out on me yeah. <laughs> just from podcasting so much yeah is there is there any other like behind the scenes stuff you guys want to reveal i mean like we you know there was that huge beef between me and colin you know that happened you know uh two months back I can't believe about, that but... you did that to Robert's girlfriend, Colin. Yeah, I was it messed was, up. Yeah, it was insane. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just so you guys know, I stole Robert's girlfriend. <laughs> now, yikes. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, now, they have to, now he they share custody of the pillowcase, guys. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Robert gets it on the odd days, and Colin gets it on the even days now. Yeah, you know, Robert caught me and his gal down at the malt shop. <laughs> just out, as I was leaning on the jukebox, about uh, to take his girl home. I see I a leather new... jacket just creeping up on you as you talk. <laughs> the bomber jacket yeah they yeah they were there, he, they were the there fonts, sitting guys. on the davenport with the fucking hula hoops and the bowling balls and <laughs> jesus <laughs> no but i mean uh, like for real though i guess behind the scenes there really isn't much drama <laughs> there definitely isn't like i stole your girlfriend shit between us nah there, there definitely now. isn't a colin and greg style falling out going on or anything Yikes. Like... <laughs> nice pull for for kind of funny fans <laughs> I yeah have no idea yeah what this is. But no, I wouldn't say drama. You know, I mean, the most dramatic thing is like there were a couple episodes where there were only two of us. You know, there were a yeah. handful of those. And oh, no. yeah. I mean, stuff definitely. I mean, personal stuff happened. Stuff happened where, you know, just couldn't be avoided. One of us had to be off the show. But, but we were pretty good about being here every week. Yeah, otherwise. I think we did. Overall, I think we did a great job. I think we we're at, you know, 95, 96 percent of the time. It was all of us. And yeah, it was and on time. And I want to say, too, during those those episodes where it was only two of us, it wasn't like the third person was like, fuck this shit. I can't do it this week. It's like it was right, just like, right. like I was I'm getting actually, married. Like, fuck me. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I oh, guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, no, it's we cool. all had literal actual excuses for like not having not being there that week. Yeah. 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 I don't remember what happened the times I was gone. Honestly, <laughs> were you getting we married? I don't remember. I don't know they were, but I they were legit. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, don't behind, know, I was probably at a concert or something behind the scenes. <laughs> I just think, you know, a lot of people are are surprised to hear that we're not all sitting in the same studio uh i've come to find that out just from feedback um mm. behind the scenes wise you guys literally drove across <laughs> the country oh yeah, yeah that was probably the biggest one because well, we were off for a while also like while we were getting our our sea legs essentially we did record about four or five pilot episodes quote unquote just to like feel it out and work mm. out the kinks before we actually started doing like numbered episodes yeah and some of those 
were able to fill in on weeks where, as you may know if you're following the show closely, on weeks where we may not have been able to produce an episode for whatever case, we would have a kind of a episode, like a classic, right? A classic. Like, yeah, I think we, <laughs> we only unquote. did that once, and it was the one once that we twice. Ob- once or twice. No, because the only one I think we did was when we obnoxiously named it like the Ultra Redux, like Arcade Edition EX Alpha. I feel like we did it twice, but maybe we thought about doing it a second time and didn't. But no, I feel I think like we, there's two. We had one. Yeah, I think you're right. Because we had one called Episode Zero, didn't we? Yeah. Isn't that the one exactly, we named yeah. like a Street Fighter game? No, I thought we called it. I can't remember. Anyways, I, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. I thought I could have sworn it was two different episodes. Maybe doesn't matter. Not. Yeah. Anyway. But um, listen back to those. And that, that was when it was rough, right? That was like. Oh, yeah. It was definitely rough beginnings. That was before I think I had my full setup. Um and i i shit i i don't know i we might have recorded an episode or two before we even had a yeti but i ended up finding that fucking sick deal on 40 dollars for a yeti plus a copy I'm, of watch dogs i'm too. still angry i'll never forget that, that. Fuck you behind I'll the scenes never yeah. forget that fucking deal it was a flash deal like dude that's what i get for uh following uh cheap ass gamer oh, cheap ass gamer cheap-ass posted gamer. that yeah cheap ass gamer is well kicks ass cheapy uh, d yeah, he sent out a link for it, and I was like, shit, jumping on this right Dude, now. Dude, I don't want to say how much my mic was, but it was not $40 with a fucking shiny new copy of Watch Dogs. Was it 50 Yeah. No, and it wasn't <laughs> murdered out either. He has, he has, like, the all-black one. Robert's got the silver one. I've got the silver and black one. Yeah, we all have... To, it's funny, because we all have the same mic, but they're all different colors. Yeah. yeah. Um, And I think Jack's got the XLR for, for one anyway. Um. But I, I definitely want to upgrade to an XLR eventually on a side note. Yeah, because like we're all using USB right now, actually, which I mean, if you're an audio file, or if you know anything about mics, it's like, I mean, this is better quality than like a shitty Logitech headset or like your your Apple headphones. But this is still nowhere near the best. Yeah. And it kind of amazes me, too. There's still there's still people out there that it's like, oh, yeah, you can. I mean, you can just podcast on a headset, right? I'm like, no, no, they can totally the can't. Best, better than all the rest. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> I mean, if you want to sound like you're talking through a fucking, I don't know, a uh, can. shitty cell phone. Man, reception. I don't want to sound like one of these uppity dudes with my pinky all up in the air, but I can just tell when I'm listening to a podcast and someone's just using like the the headphones that came with their Android phone or with their Apple phone. I can just hear it, and once I hear it, I can't unhear it, and then I'm just like, I can't really enjoy this podcast because it actually literally hurts my hearing to listen to this. Yeah, I mean, I was listening to uh, uh, a new Collins last stand episode, and uh, like about halfway in, I was like, you know, sound doesn't sound as good as it usually does. I wonder what's going on. And then he, they actually, like right on the spot, he mentioned that they were using lav mics because he was off-site from his hit where he usually records. I was like, oh, like you can hear that shit, man. Don't think people can't hear it because they can hear it. No, I got you, man. But yeah, but anyway, on an aside there. Uh, yeah. So guys, do we want to talk about what the future holds? Ta-da-ma. Ta-da-ma. So Ta-da-ma. basically, yeah. And and thank you guys for listening. If you have listened to us this entire series, all 66 plus episodes of this, like goes without saying a huge huge massive thank you and we hope that oh, we were totally. able to you know uh give you information about video games but also make you laugh and also hang out with you and we thank and you for anyone that ever thank you for anyone that left us a rating on itunes like robert would always ask you and remind you to at the end of every single episode we always ask for those itunes reviews because they are important and we thank the people that entered our contest in the beginning to uh, receive an Amazon gift card for a nominal amount uh, for leaving reviews, too. So, like I said, we're not above paying for reviews. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. Uh, <laughs> we did it. Uh, but, but right. So, I mean, just thank everyone. I mean, it goes without saying. And like I said, it's not over. We're not just like hanging up our headphones and calling it a day and Robert and Robert, you know, rides off to Korea and and Colin rides off to fucking get his Ph.D. And what do I do? Right <laughs> off to like taco land or whatever the fucking Austin. taco, right. taco, yeah. taco and, shack. Yeah, it ain't like that. You'll like we're still going and we're going to be yank. going strong. And, and over the next uh, over here, over November, like you're not going to be hearing from us in podcast form very much, but we are going to be freaking busy with stuff very busy yeah. getting setting the stage for the next chapter which we have big big massive plans for and so essentially like we said before we'll say it again we'll, we'll say it even another time just to make sure that it gets, is understood loud and clear but we are officially transitioning to a new podcast an all new format 
And the name of that show is Tadai Ma, a Terrace House podcast. And you can find everything there at terracehousepodcast.com. It's Actually, not up I, I, yet. I, 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 yeah, it's oh. not up yet. It's, it's not, not up yet. yet. I'm just saying. But like, we, it, just look for it. Please look forward to because we are going to be working so, so hard on that and getting and there is a lot of work to be done, guys, when Please you're rolling out a new podcast. And so this is essentially going to be the the English speaking companion podcast to all things Terrace House. OK, and so we're going to take what we've been doing. Uh, some of the most fun shows we did with Tiny Disc was our Terrace House episodes for me personally. And so we're going to be taking that and just cranking it to fucking 11. Right. We're going to be going whole hog in it. We're gonna do all the dirty things to the podcast that gets done. Yep. Yeah. All, all, the, all, all, the, all the all the dirty work I meant to say. No, no, yeah. the dirty and things. The dirty. Yeah. The, the, instead yeah. of instead of publishing our podcast on YouTube, we're gonna publish exclusively on Pornhub. Please no, please no, don't put that, <laughs> don't put that evil on me. So no, but but we're we're doing a thing, guys. It's it's going to be big. Like I said, we're putting everything we have into it. Everything we've learned from years and years of podcasting, you know, is going to go into trying to make this as much a success. So if you're into Terrace House, if you've been listening to those shows and you want more and more of it on a regular basis, like come with us on this journey. We are going to be there is going to be a couple weeks <clears throat> when we're talking about the future of overlap. So if you continue listening to this feed, there are going to be a couple episodes of Tadai Ma on this feed just to help you transition over there and yeah look forward to it but i mean i don't want to say a definitive date yet uh, but i will say we're certainly shooting for 2019 as the launch of this new this new enterprise i uh okay did we already say a date i, I thought we said december but okay. Oh, okay i didn't know if we officially said it or not i was just reticent to say a date right now december definitely yeah is the yeah. goal let's just say it's the goal okay yeah, and I mean, just to kind of like reiterate what Jack was saying, yeah, thank you for everyone who listened along with us because, I mean, this definitely was our, our baby, the the show, yeah. um, and, and definitely like you witnessed a lot, like it was a very transitional period in uh, a lot of our lives, and, uh, you know, like especially like me and Robert and all, I mean, all three of us really trying to like work towards the games industry, and we're that much closer, you know, um, and so definitely in that aspect, you'll be hearing a lot more about games from us and things like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's just been a, a really nice outlet to, to be able to get behind a mic and, it, you know, and, and just basically experience what the, all the people that I listen to experience behind the mic. And also I, I know that like, you know, sometimes podcasters can have a huge impact on a lot of people. I mean, a lot of them do, a lot of them are a huge part of our lives. And, you know, if, if we've been that for anyone, just just to let you know i mean it, that means a lot to man, us of course it does shout out i always think about you questy i don't know if i ever mentioned you by name but shout out to you man i never met you before but you are down with the homies you're down with me and if you're listening to this i'm gonna shout out you guys have any other shout outs you'd like to give yo to no i do i haven't questy i love you man yeah fucking love that guy yeah summer too shout out to her she was hilarious i don't know if i ever told you guys this but when we had that when we had that um debate about whether or not Funyuns or chips the next day at work she's a co-worker of mine next day at work she has a bag of Funyuns on my desk with a post-it note on top of it saying we stand with Colin <laughs> <laughs> yeah I remember that I was yes. like shit so, you know so I want to revisit that, that. I, I stand with Colin too on that now that Funyuns are chips now okay, you look, are crossing the fence what look if someone crossing says the Rubicon look if someone like if, if I'm having a party and someone says hey I'm bringing chips and then they bring like Funyuns I'm not gonna be like get the fuck out of my house <laughs> like that's this. not what that's not what I'm saying I'm not saying I don't like Funyuns I love Funyuns I'm saying they're not chips that's all I'm saying I, I mean like to me I mean they're, they're they're like in this lump group of snack where I'm just like okay chips that I get it it's a bag with crunchy shit in it you're a traitor. yeah I mean it's made of cornmeal just saying you're a traitor okay that's what I do uh, shout outs let's uh, see who else shouting out to my beautiful wife for making cameos here and there throughout the year shout out to mom and dad shout out to my friend Christian shout out to <laughs> shout out to Pillboy <laughs> Pillboy shout, shout out to Pill all boy. them pair shout out to all them pair Bortles. Um, no, Bortles. but ser yeah, seriously though, like thank you to like everyone in my life that you know is giving me support on the show. Really appreciate you, everyone that's ever asked what the name of the show is, where to download it, etc. Anyone that ever gave us a review, like heartfelt, heartfelt thank you to all those people. To 
totally. And and shout out to Jono too, Jono Peck. Yeah, uh, I know I kept telling you we're gonna have you on, dude, but it just it, things just didn't work out on our end. Hope you apologize like for House. that, bro. <laughs> yeah, and I totally apologize if I mispronounced your name, <laughs> but you you were the guy, and you're always supporting you know other podcasts and putting in work is a great show, man. So keep it up, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, we done with the mushy shit. God, Robbie, you uh, heartless <laughs> bastard. Dude, I got this entire stack of sticky notes with me. Ever, right? ever since you stole his uh, girlfriend pillow, he's just been cranky, dude. It's been mad. I've been mad. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, sure. Uh, I think just look forward to what we've got in store, you know? Tadai Ma is going to be a great show. I'm really excited about it, actually, about talking about Terrace House because Terrace House is a buck wild show. And all I want to say is if you don't know what Terrace House is, give it a chance because I've yet to meet someone where they've tried watching it. And they were like, nah. You know what? You, you bring up a good point because it does have a high hit rate because everyone I've brought it up to that then goes and gives it a chance is into it. Like they get a dick in a dip. big In a big way, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like I just tell them, hey, like check it, check it out. It's called Terrace House on Netflix. Next week they're like, dude, I've finished four seasons. Help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Help me, please. I think it made like some sort of list of like most bingeable shows on Netflix. It or really something. is. It yeah. Really so is. so check it out, watch it, and then follow us on our magical journey. Tadaima, a Terrace House podcast. T A D A I M A. Um, we At are TerraceHousePodcast.com. Yeah, that website, it's not live yet, but our social media feeds are kind of live. We have them. You can follow them. They aren't, like, set up yet, um, but you can find us on Twitter at t- uh, Tadaima Pod. Tadaima Pod. And Tadaima Pod. Instagram is Tadaimagram. And do you guys know the Facebook? Is it just Tadaima? It's Tadaima uh, Terrace House Podcast. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, so T-A-D-A-I-M-A. So, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Proud of you. Um, so that's yeah. going to be our new like official feed. This is the last episode of the Tiny Disc Podcast. So it's been real. Wow. I guess. I don't know what to say. Hugs. That's kind of sad. Like, God, it's it's kind of hitting me. Hey, now. will you guys it's, sign uh, my yearbook? Yes, I'll <laughs> sign mine first. But guys, literally, we're like doing another show. It's like all three of us are still there. Yeah, yeah we're just, you know we're just not talking about video games anymore. If anything, Don't well, we'll just talk about it before the show. Ding, 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 but ding, ding, if anything, it, the, about me. the family's ding, about to add another no, seat, too. No, no, no. So we Don't are uh, about to add another seat and look forward to that. That'll be Yeah, crazy. we're going to have a fourth, and it's going to be cool. It's going to be great. Tadaima is, is something that I think is just going to be, like, the best of Tiny Disc, but always. Like we're always going to be on the best of our game. Does that make Hopefully. sense? Yeah, maybe. Optimistic, aren't you? It's it's in my name. It's in my it's it in is. my it handle. Fucking is. All right, one last time, boys. Where right. can I find you online on the internet? Guys, I have a revelation. Oh God! So I officially changed my Twitter handle to at oh. Colin in Mono. Whoa! Now I just I have one thing to say. It's just at Colin in Mono. Oh, not Colin in Mono. Five. He's not a t- he's not Italian, guys. It's not Colin no Amano. no not not E Mono. And that's Colin with two L's because I know y'all like to fuck up Colin and put only one L. Isn't that Colin like Powell? Nah, nah, dude. Right, are you, are you saying, saying the Colin Powell? Are you saying Colin yes. Moriarty is wrong? Basically, oh, that's why you up? like him. That's why you like him because you have the same first name. I never even thought about that. <laughs> yeah, us Collins, man. We got to yeah. stick together, whether it's one or two L's. <laughs> yeah, it's tough okay. out there. Oh yeah, shout out to my kind of funny Seattle crew, also who always call me LL because <laughs> I always talk about like it's fucking two L's. That's funny, LL Uncle yeah. L. Yeah, guys. Yeah. Okay, I'm on Instagram at Mister dot. Oh, so what is it? Mr dot underscore cepeda c-e-p-e-d-a on instagram and i promise you i am making a new year's resolution here two months early to be more active on social media promises so start following bless up it's it's a halloween resolution (laughs) yes halloween res. that's how that works there you go uh you can find me on all the social media at p-i-n-o-p-t-i-m-i-s-t uh and you can also find me writing at tech raptor and game luster so check those sites out they're pretty cool I got him that job of Check Raptor, by the way. You did not get it. You just threw it on my desk. I was like, okay, cool. I'll apply. Yeah, just like I threw a podcast on your desk, motherfucker. Sure. Yes. <laughs> do you want to take? Owner- do you want to just take ownership of everything? You want to swing your big dick here at the end? I made this man. No, just kidding. <laughs> Guys. Uh, yeah. 
Have you did you did you do social media yet? I don't know. I don't know. Did you? Did you say your thing? Yeah. Wow. Not oh, even you listening your to your own show, Colin. <laughs> what a piece of shit. Damn. What are you paying attention to here? Are you distracted? <laughs> We're closing out the do- series, man. <laughs> what are you doing? Right. I don't know, man. I, I've been focusing on. Uh, I don't know. I'm a space cadet. You know me. This, this is like Peter. Here. This is like Peter. I, just, I don't know, man. I just work here. <laughs> Hold on, guys. This is like Peter Jackson <laughs> at when they're filming the last scene of Lord of the Rings with. Uh, uh Elijah Wood and they do like 45,000 takes cuz he just doesn't want it to be over. Is that seriously something that happened? Yeah, yeah, they and they're all crying and stuff. And I haven't I haven't watched I haven't watched all my extended edition special yeah, features check yet. Check it out, it's good. Oh man, you are okay. like 15 years too late, dude. I have it all. I have it oh, all. It's, it's a so lot of special features. It's like 20 hours, yeah. Yeah. Guys, all right. We have been the Tiny Disc Podcast, <sighs> a show about games and life. Wait, Colin, did you have something to say? <laughs> What? Because really. you were like, wait, are you done shouting your shout outs? Because I was like, oh, t- this is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is this is this and, is us signing off. And uh, it's not forever. <laughs> it might be forever, but it's not definitely never that we revisit this again. Does that make sense? What I said? Yeah. Check back in in a year when we're medium disc. We talk about PS2 games only. Yeah. What once once we sync the fucking Terrace House show, we'll come back groveling to this. <laughs> Well, as they said at my graduation in high school, it's something unpredictable, and in the Uh, end is right. I hope you had the time of your life. And that was the last straw. That was the last audio thing they ever let us put out on Libsyn or on YouTube. We are copyright stricken, and now we're the way of PewDiePie's girlfriend. We are off YouTube. Zoinks. All right, guys. Well, that's one way to sign off. Let's round it up. Let's round it up. Bye. All right, okay. All right. Okay. Robert is a cold, callous Korean man. What? I'm saying. not even. I'm not even Korean. What is this? What From is the shit? land of Korea. There yes, you, you are. He's Kyle. Right. Okay. Catch us I on. I love you guys. Ca- All right, Colin. Uh, catch us on <laughs> Tatai Ma in a month. <laughs> yeah. Look forward to it. Follow up, guys. Come on. Follow up those social medias. Follow up. Bookmark our page. Get ready. This is the longest fucking start sign catch- I know. Start catching up to Terrace House <laughs> now. Get ready. Pepper your Angus, as Robert likes to say. I think we need to do a retake, guys. Uh, we okay, need to no, do a 44,000th take. <sighs> no, we're done. That's it. That's all. I'm done. I'm done talking. I'm done talking. All right. Bye, bye guys. It's Catch been us in a, a real month. thing. Yes, yes. We'll see you in a month. Ta-da-ba. Yeah. I love you all. Bye-bye. See you soon. Yorushimasei. <laughs>